Brakfi Hawa, Brakfi Amshai, Brakfi Hawa, Brakfi Amshai, Brakfi Hawa, Brakfi Hawa, Bashim Yamshai, Bashim, Rukaku Dash. The belongs to the apostles and the elders of the great so you will. Um, salutations are hopeful of luck out there, man. You are Kim to Zadakim. I do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. The few sisters that listen, the confusion of faces that are abroad. Anybody that's listening and learn, learning, shout out one of salutations. Um, I'm pretty sure this week's topic is going to be entitled, You Have to Grow, all right? You have to show some type of production of growth. Um, speaking with a brother today at camp, by the way, this is the post camp in transit. Camp was beautiful, man. Went out there teaching the words in the brick ass weather. Um, but you know, the scriptures tell you that we have to be in season, instant in season, out of season. When you go on the Greek word for instant right there, it pretty much means present, you know, just like how you were in a class when you were young, they called your name. You say present here, you know, same process as the Lord is saying, pretty much, you know, you got to be um, planting <laughs> and sowing seeds in a time that's not really convenient to sow seed, and that's the dead of winter. So we still on, we went out there sowing, and we were present, okay, to the spirit and grace of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, and here at Great Millstone, man, um, so the apostles, apostles and elders, which lead by example, if you can make it out, you make it out because um, you never know who's listening, never know who's going to be out there. And first and foremost, even if no one is out there, you were commanded to do this thing by our Heavenly Father. All right, be out there on the highways and byways. So, just glad the Most High gave us the strength, man, and the, the, the diligence to be out there, you know, pretty much all winter, per usual, you know, until until he comes back. But going back to the topic at hand, we got to grow. And I know that we teach that... <clears throat> I know that we teach, of course, that America is going to be destroyed, which is, it will be destroyed, and this thing is going to be uh, destroyed um, financially and economically, but at the end of camp, man, one one of the brothers, the priest Palau, he brought out a good point, and the apostle always speak about this, you know, he brought out stocks, and the brother gave stock um, advice, investments, that's a sign of growth, man, that's a sign of showing, I'm just using that example just to put the point that, look, brothers are extremely different um, and know how to maneuver in the world, um, know how to maneuver in the world much more better than they did when they first came in, man, all right? And this thing is not about, we know it's not about t tangible things, but look, you know, you might see somebody that you grew up with and they're doing better, you, better than you in the so-called, better than you in the world, so-called, right? And brothers might say, well, fuck that, you know, they in the world and all that shit, but you know what? You have more wisdom than that person. Maybe if you applied yourself, you could be better than that motherfucker. Not that it's about that, but <clears throat> you, sh you know, you you grown in the scriptures and you grown in, in the wisdom of this thing. Well, you should, you know, we should be able to apply it and, and use it in the, uh, use it in um, in the world and use it in the truth. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, right? Um, oh, recently, the apostle Elita also mentioned um, reproof. Right, so when we approve these other camps, like like the apostle was saying, show more growth. You know, I'm studying myself for, first and foremost. I'm gonna apply that for sure, and that's what really separates us from niggas, right? Because niggas get older, but they never grow up. Now we know that we're we're like it onto plants. Several several different parables all throughout the scriptures. First that comes to mind is Matthew the 13th chapter that you know you sow a seed and there's different kind of uh, seeds, some that from stony ground. But eventually, the one that fell on rich soil is the one that grows. And, you know, you look at growing a seed and growing a plant that it needs water, and that's indicative, indicative of the scriptures. Sunlight, that's indicative of the scriptures, you know? Um, good ground, right? A good mind. Because um, it, I believe it's, 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 I believe it's a Becker that says, break up fallow grounds. To plant a seed, you have to break the ground up, right? You have to soften it and break it up. Uh, sometimes the ground could be very hard. When you can't use a plow, you have to use a, a fucking hammer. You know, so that breaking up that plow is really mean breaking up a man's mind, you know, to plant the seed. So you have to break it down, you know, because what? That brother might be hard-headed. He, he might be stuck on, look, God only loves everybody or God loves every other nation. You know, that's a hard ground. To, you have to break it up. You have to say, look, according to this scripture, I, that scripture, you know, going to the, the understanding of the, the nations and the Gentiles. So when you're doing that, 
you're pretty much plowing that ground, breaking it up that you may plant and bring seed. All right, which is this true knowledge. Look, I'll give you an Israelite, so-called white man's the devil, America's Babylon, you know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. And you got to constantly keep watering it with scriptures that it may grow, you know? Luke 8, 8, Luke 8 and 11, the seed is the word of the Most High. Now, if you have a plant, if you have a plant right there and it's not growing, okay, and it's just there stagnant, you're going to say, wait a minute, something is off. Is it not getting nourished enough? To, you know what I'm saying? So we are indicative of those plants, man. You can't be the same duty you were when you came in three years ago, you know? Still bullshit in the world, still half-stepping, all right? Still not progressing. All you want to do is hold post, all right? All you want to do is just be on camera all day, just an excuse not to get yourself involved, you know? You don't want to do that, okay? You want to be constantly on point, constantly make sure you get it better, constantly make sure you're learning in these scriptures, man. Okay? And if you look at the plant, the ones that grow the best is the ones that's next to water. And there's no excuse to not grow. I mean, the the amount of information that's out there, um, scripturally, even, even with YouTube suppression, it's like infinite, man. Okay? And then when you apply these scriptures in your daily life, now you're also growing like literally maturing, like you're mentally maturing, all right? You're mentally, you're mentally becoming a, a, a more um, mature person, a person that shows growth and more, more character, okay? And that's all found through the wisdom of the scripture, man, okay? You keep saying, okay, it's locked here, whatever, you know? But that's that's what's making us uh, better. That's what's, that's what's building us up, man. And brothers are showing, of course, um, maturity levels, man, and that's a beautiful thing, now, of course, everybody grew differently in different times, and mature different and such, so every brother, every brother is different in their own way, but as a whole, right, we gotta constantly keep building ourselves up, you know, spiritually, mentally, of course, all right, and not be that same stagnant individual, that's how come the apostle put out the mandate, look, three shows a week, now, what's three shows a week gonna do for you, that's gonna help build you up and grow you, because as you teach lessons, and as you put together scriptures, all right, and these scriptures come to your mind and you and you do it more to the point that it's just secondhand nature for you, you're gonna start taking away things from lessons and, 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 and these script, different scriptures that, that you're learning, all right, and applying it to your life. And certain situations in your life are gonna force you in a way to um, apply these scriptures and, and, and let them meditate in your mind. Okay? Certain scriptures stick heavy, certain scriptures stick in your mind even more than usual because you had to apply it to your life, you know? And you got a better understanding because you lived it, you know? You lived it, you went through it, you went through it. When the scriptures speak about chastisement and, 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 and being a base, you went through that. You went through a situation that was similar to that, man. All right, when you went, to, when you went through a situation with dealing with a brother that might have wronged you, all right? Now those certain scriptures you know, scriptures like Proverbs that tell you, you know, um, you know, if, if someone was evil to you, you know, rather not evil for evil and and um, pretty much taking care of a brother that even though he wronged you, it's like, he, and you take care of him, it's like he even calls upon his head, like you got to help him out and the Lord will bless you for it. You know what I'm saying? So these types of things, these scriptures resonate more with you like, oh man, I applied that scripture and I saw the outcomes of it being exactly what the Bible said it would be. You know, or now I know not to do this, and not like you know, there's certain things that brothers even warned you against, you know, but you still go ahead and do it. But really, the most high made you do it so that you may live that life experience, and now you could use that wisdom to give to the next man, you know. And it's constantly about that, man. It's constantly about sh um, sharing experiences with different brothers and building and learning that way, man. Hey, I, no, I went that route. That route, that route, I wouldn't recommend that route. Okay, well, oh, but this route, y'all yeah, say go about it this way. That, you know what I'm saying? And that's one of the best ways to to, to um, navigate through Babylon, man, is with counsel. Scripture says do anything without counsel, man. It says, you know, do, ultimately it's good to have counsel from different mothers and then what? And then ultimately go with your own um, understanding on it based on the different counsel that you receive, man, and trust in that movement, man. And the most I will direct your steps throughout Babylon, all right, if you apply everything correctly, and, and successfully, man. And when I mean success, I don't mean you have to exceed in riches in the society. 
Okay, I mean, you're going to have a roof over your head. You're going to have shelter, man. You're going to have a stable income because the scripture says, tells us to go out there and get a job and get and, and work. All right? The scriptures tell you um, not to get caught up in the so-called white man system. So the scriptures tell you, look, Brendan Arthur Caesar was his Caesar. So don't do any tax evasion. All right? Don't try to commit any criminal activities to get ahead. Don't think, oh, this place is going down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be like, fuck it. I'm not going to watch my diet. I'm not going to give two fucks about my bills. I'm not going to, you know, now you're just being a detrimental person. And in doing that, I actually rob him from the most high. Because you know brothers are going to hold you down. Right? But here it is. You get your check. You want to go blow it at a strip club and, and, and just do this stupid, dumb shit. You know? Self-inflicted wounds. Now all the brothers got to pick you up, man. We don't, and you don't want that to be a, a perpetual habit, man, because that shows a lack of sign of growth. You know. And these things, as time progress, and we're here in Babylon, right? Brothers have been learning from their past experiences and and, and such, man. All right, and it's good to what? You know, put it in the form of a lesson. You don't have to put your personal information out there. You know, but the ba the basis of what went down and how the scriptures um, got you through it, all right, and what advice you could give. And hey, man, I gotta give a shout out to the brother Ariella, man, the elder Ariella there in Texas, man. He's helping them, giving brothers, you know, how to manage manage their financial situations and stuff like that. You wouldn't see shows like that uh, a few years ago, man. You know, probably like seven years ago. You know, now the apostles always went to you know tell us to get jobs and such, you know, but now they're bringing out even more. Of shit, how to you know how to get a legal bag, you know, how to manage manage a family situation if you, if if you know if you happen to have kids. Now Jeremiah the sixteenth chapter, the first two verses tell us don't have no kids in this place. Yes, Jeremiah at the time was talking about Jerusalem, but prophetically in America, man, because that's the same thing. Other than the Book of Matthew, going to them that gives up. But now, if that situation happens, all right, how do I go about it? Well, you have brothers that that had kids and have kids brothers that have kids and dealing with that situation I've grown you know you can't just be like man fuck America and fuck my kids and fuck my family no we don't think like that man you know now if your family is hindering you and stopping you from doing this work now you have to put them on the back burner because the truth comes first that's no doubt but that shouldn't be that's not an excuse to just say look fuck them and nah man so we learning how to deal with um, that situation how to deal with a woman that's grieving your spirit, man. You know, because, you know, your baby mama could be a demon, but you know, you don't want to, you don't want to get caught up in child support. So, hey, I, you know, how, you know, how would you recommend that, you know, you deal with this woman? And that advice is going to come from what? The, the advice is going to come from prior experience and, and the growth that you had, that uh, that particular person had in this thing, man. So it's all about growing, man. It's all about growth, man. And, Hey, that was the topic of the lesson. There's different avenues that we can constantly keep improving in. And you got to, that's, that's one thing, you know, we can pray the most high for. You know, let me grow into the Hebrew. Let me grow spiritually. You know? And it's, you know, it's not wicked if you want to grow uh, physically as well, you know, meaning you want a better health. You know, you want to improve, um, you know, make sure your stature is, is better, man, you know? Ain't nothing wrong with that shit, man. I pray for, you know, mental strength, physical strength, spiritual strength. Not necessarily in that order, but different, av different avenues of strength and growth, man. So you're not the same individual that you were when you first came in since day one, you know? Just like an actual plant, just like an actual tree. An olive tree could be around for hundreds of years, man. They live very long. Olive trees live long as hell. And they're constantly growing, you know? Hey, hey, why is a building called a building when it's already built? Built because that building is constantly being maintained and kept alive, and different things added onto it. And the Book of Corinthians tells us what? The first chapter, the sixth verse. No, the first shot. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, I believe, around the ninth verse. That we're the Most High's building. I know damn well that we're the Most High's temple, pursuant to the Book of Acts seven and forty-eight, right? But what you got to do to that building? You got to constantly maintain it. You know, you got to put new brick and mortar here, this, that, and the third. You got to constantly 
know what I'm saying? Because what, pursuant to the book of Ecclesiastes, all right, through idleness or through, slothful, through, through slothfulness, all right, the, um, the building collapse, something like that, the, build, the building decays. To the, it's pretty much saying, look, if you don't take care of the building, the building's going to fall, right? And you're that building, okay? You can't just be content and, uh, with where you're at, man. You have to constantly uh, keep going and maintaining yourself in this truth, man. And that's what it's about. And so with that, I'm going to give all the praises. To Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukakodash, the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which you will. And of course, salutations to the whole the left out there, man. You are came to Zadakim that do this thing in the most truth and sincerity. Shalom.